Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to create um, a sort of collage effect like this image on screen. And um, this is made by an artist called Mariano uh, Petronetti. Um, he creates these um, sort of very surreal collages, playing around with scale and you know changing the colour and things like that. So that's what we're going to do today. What I've already done is I've been on a website called Pexels and I've downloaded some images that I think will work for what I want to do today. Um, I've decided to try to create a night sky um, version of this. Um, this is going to be my base image. Um, so you can see Mariano Petronetti has used like a sunset or sunrise effect in his. Um, I don't want to create um, you know, a, a recreation, an exact recreation. I'm just using him as inspiration. Um, so I'm going to try to do this effect but with a night sky and with a moon instead. So this is going to be my base image. The very first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer which you can right click and press duplicate layer like this or you can do um, command J or control J um, on the keyboard. So there we go, that's my second layer. The reason I do that is um, so that if anything goes wrong I can delete any upper layers and my original background layer here is locked away with a padlock and it's safe and I can um, go back to it if I need to. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my moon. So I have taken some inspiration uh, from a photographer who um, creates these images um, that he, or he, he, he um, they look like uh, planets, like something from outer space, uh, but they're actually um, bottoms of saucepans and frying pans and things like that. So he's um, photographed them and then he's put them in a sort of very plain black background to look like the outer space and played around with like, the lighting on the edge and so on. So I'm going to come up to the quick selection tool and I want to select um, just that frying pan or saucepan or whatever it is um, to act as my moon. And I'm going to press Command C um, to, con to copy, do Control C if you're on the, um, on the PC. And I'm going to press um, Command V, oops, Command V to paste it um, or Control V if you're on, um, on the PC. So. Um, there's the moon. Obviously, it's a bit smaller than what I needed to be because um, Mariano Petronetti's played around with scale. He's made this sun obviously like super, super big. We're going to do the same. I'm going to enlarge the moon and have it sit in here on the horizon. So I need to go to um, free transform, which can be found under edit, or you can do command T or control T as a shortcut on the keyboard. Now, if I just um, pull these corners out to enlarge it, um, it would... Um, be very fluid in terms of the, the dimensions and it would become out of proportion. I want to keep these proportions because I want this to remain very spherical. So I'm going to press shift first and then click and drag so that it stays in proportion. And I'm going to place it roughly where I want it to be. Obviously it looks really pixelated like that. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard and there we go. It's placed the moon where I want it to go. Now um, you can see that Mariano Petronetti's top um, third of his image is very, very orange, you know, bright orange, bright yellow, bright red. Um, I'm going to play around with the colours as well. Um, I'm going to um, um, enhance the blues, really, um, because obviously we've got some lovely blue coming through the night sky. We've got a bit of blue here on this bottom of this saucepan. Um, I've also found this image with the Aurora Borealis. So I'm going to put this in as well. And then I'm going to play around with the saturation levels and um, try and get like a really vivid sort of blue, um, a very unreal and surreal um, blues like, like these oranges that um, Mariano's used. So I'm going to add this bor um, Aurora Borealis effect into my sky as well. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And I'm selecting the uh, top half of that night sky. I'm going to press Command C, go back to my composition and press Command V. Now you can see that it's currently sat on top of the moon, um, which is not what we want. I want to bring that layer here underneath layer with the moon on it, um, so it's sitting behind. But again, I want to play around with the scale, I want to enlarge it, so I'm going to do Command-T, so pre-transform pre again. Again, I'm going to press Shift whilst I enlarge it. I'm just going to move it around slightly and have it sort of coming out from behind the moon like that. So I'm going to press enter and drop the image. Now you can see quite clearly there are some um, uh, lines here where one image ends and another begins. 
I don't really want that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit just to make the um, uh, make the difference a little bit less obvious. We can worry about that. Um, and then let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just pressing Command and the plus sign on the keyboard. I'm going to try to get rid of this really defined line here, and I'm going to use the clone stamp tool for that. So under the clone stamp tool, um, you can play around with sizes, you can play around with hard edge brushes, soft edge brushes, and so on. I'm going to try and use a little bit smaller. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to use a soft edge, ooh, soft edge brush, um, and we're going to try to basically clone some of this colour from this part of the sky into this one to make the line a little bit less obvious. Now, if I had the opacity up at 100% on this, I think it would look a little bit too obvious. Um, you know, for example, if I show you with a hard edge brush and at 100%, you can see what happens. What I what you need to do when you use the clone stamp tool is you need to press Alt on the keyboard and it changes the cursor into a little target, into a crosshair. So you press click and it basically selects that area that you've been hovering over. Now, wherever you then click next on the image, um, the distance between the original crosshair and where your cursor goes will remain fixed through the entire process. So, for example, I did my original crosshair run roughly in this area. So, I'm just going to press click here. And obviously you can see there's got a very defined edge because I clicked that hard edge brush and it's at 100% opacity. If I come a little bit lower, you can see that the um, uh, turquoise colour disappears from inside the cursor because, um, and, and then reappears as I come nearer, because the fixed distance between the cursor and the crosshair um, means that as I come further down, the crosshair is now hovering over the darker blue background. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So wherever I position over here, you know, it's not going to be applying the turquoise on this side of the image. It's going to be applying the other colour that's the distance, the fixed distance between the two points. Okay. Now I don't obviously don't want this effect. So I'm just going to take a couple of steps back on this. So we're going to just go there. This is the history palette on here, and it's quite good for like taking steps back. Now then, let's change this. I want a soft um, edge brush, and I definitely want to bring down the opacity a little bit. Let's go aim for about 60% and see what happens. So again, I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard and change it to a crossy and click, and then I'm going to start to apply some of those colours down. So you can see that's a bit more of a subtle effect than what it was previously. Um, if I raise the um, brush size a little and then drop the opacity down a little bit further, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to press Alt, click, and then I'm just going to apply a few more there just to get rid of that sort of very defined edge. I'm going to move over to this side and over here you can see again a really defined edge coming through on this side. So let's try it over here as well. Um, let's drop the size down initially and then bring it up a little bit stronger. I'm going to press Alt. Oh, sorry, wrong one. I did Command Alt and then click. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to work my way down this line. And as I'm clicking, can you see that little crosshair appearing? So you can see where the um, where the pixels are being selected from. Yeah, so you can see it's not. Try and get rid of that area. I'm going to raise this up a little bit, drop the opacity down. I'm going to press Alt again. Work my way up. Now, there's this area down here that I'm not particularly happy with. This one looks a little bit. Um, uh, a little bit faker down here, faker, more fake. <laughs> uh, let's do Alt here. Use a larger brush just to try to um, soften the effect a little bit. The, the smaller the brush, the sometimes the more obvious the 
um, Chrome stamping is. And there's like a larger one. So it's just creating those kind of softer effects. I'm just going to zoom out. So I've still got this defined line up here. So let's zoom back in. Oops, a bit too far. Uh, let's zoom up get to the top. Right, let's try that again. Let's drop the size down. And we'll do Alt again. Clone stamp some of this colour into the darker sky behind. Quite lucky with that the two images I'm using, um, you know, it, it being a night sky, imperfections are, 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 are quite easily hidden. Um, because obviously you've got a very sort of speckled effect with this, um, with the stars and the fact that, you know, the, the, the two, it's not one solid colour, you've got a variety of different sort of um, um, blues and, and navies and purples and things like that. So I can play around a little bit. Now, the other thing you can do as well, um, whilst you're clone stamping, is... And also clone stamp some extra stars. So if I wanted to, I could let me go down a little bit. Um, clone stamp this star here, and then position another one over this side. Do it again, just to raise the brightness a little bit. There we go. That's what my night sky is looking like so far. I'm quite happy with that. The um, defined edges have been hidden relatively well. What I want to do now is play around with the saturation. So I'm going to come down onto this background layer and I'm going to go up to image, adjustments and hue and saturation. You can also do control or command and a U on the keyboard as a shortcut. Okay. Um, if we bring up this, um, this box here, um, a hue and saturation box, and I'm just going to bring the saturation up a little bit. Should intensify that blue a little bit from behind. We're not seeing too much of it because a lot of it's covered by the Aurora Borealis. We'll go with that for now. Press OK. Let's go on to the Aurora Borealis layer and do the same thing. So I'm going to press Command U. And again, I'm going to intensify the saturation of the colour, the intensity of those turquoises and blues and so on. So we've got about that. Do. We'll do the same thing with the moon. Command and U. And again, I'm going to increase the saturation on this. Make it quite bluey. That'll do. So, uh, oh, I've got to 100%. Hang on. Put that down the other way. There we go. Um, so, obviously, this is quite an unrealistic effect, colour effect, but that's what we're aiming for with Mariano Petronetti's work. You know, I'm not, not trying to create an image that looks real. I'm trying to make something that looks surreal. So there we go, so I'm happy with that so far. Now, he's put some uh, rocks here in the foreground, um, and I think, it, to me, it looks like he may have um, flipped the image and made it symmetrical, because this sort of um, pink path here, you know, is the same as this side over, the, over here. Um, some of these rock formations look symmetrical to the ones on this side. So we're going to also going to try to do a similar effect. I found uh, this image previously um, on Pexels. So I'm going to use this one. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so let me deselect that for a moment. What I'm going to do again is use the quick selection tool. And again, because there's a really good contrast between the pixels of the rock compared to the pixels in the sky, the quick selection tool is doing a really good job of just picking out what I want it to. Um, if you've got a quite complex image, which we'll come to in a moment, um, you might need to use something a little bit different. So there we go. I'm going to press Command C to copy. I'm going to come onto my composition, Command V to drop it on. And again, you can see it's got its own layer um, over on this side. So I'm going to do Command T for free transform. And we go into oh command T sorry, and then uh, I'm going to position it roughly about here, so to have the moon sort of coming out from behind the rocks. 
oh, do you know what? Actually, it might be easier for us to play around with the colour of these rocks if I keep it on a separate, uh, separate thing. Um, ignore that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that layer, actually. If I go back to this original image, uh, I'm going to press Command and Deselect. Um, something that um, we're going to do is something called duotoning. So on this original um, Mariana Petronetti image, you can see that these rocks are really quite bluish. It's the only colour, and there's a variety of tones of that colour. Okay, We're going to try to achieve a very similar effect, um, if I can remember how to do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to come to this original image first, and come over into Channels, and then when you select on... Um, a channel, red, green, or blue, um, you can see the um, contrasts in the highlights and the shadows. So I'm just viewing them to see which one I want to take into um, the image. I think I'm going to use the green one, actually, um, because there's uh, some nice dark shadows and there's also some highlights on here too, so I'm going to use the green one. I'm going to press um, command on the keyboard or control if you're on a PC and I'm going to click on the green one and you can see it's basically turned into a selection is what it's done. Okay, um, I'm going to go back into the layers and I'm going to add a solid colour layer um, and it asks you straight away to pick a colour. So because we've got um, a lot of blues going on in our night sky and our moon and so on. I'm going to go for some sort of very warm colours. Um, this first colour that I'm choosing is going to be the highlights. I'm going to pick a relatively light colour and I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again where I'm going to select green again. I'm going to select Command and click back into the layers and I'm going to press solid colour. Now this time I'm going to create a little bit of a contrast with the pink, uh, with the orange colour. Oh, no, hang on, I know what I've done wrong. I think I need to deselect that. I'm going to press Command D on the keyboard to deselect that. I don't think I need to do that last step again actually. I think I just need to come here and just add another layer, I think, I think it was the first one, if I go for the pink, it's going to be a bit darker, I don't know, what I'm doing here is I'm just looking to see what colour these shadows are, and I'm going to press OK, and what you'll notice is, I've got um, two layers now above this original background layer. Um, there's one which has um, highlighted the shadows and then one which has highlighted the highlights, <laughs> uh, sorry, coloured the shadows and coloured the highlights. So I've got two colours basically going on in this image now. I've got the purpley colour um, colouring the shadows and I've got the peachy colour colouring the highlights. Now let's see if my quick selection tool will work on this or whether the pixels will be will be too much. Oh, I'm wondering whether I need to flatten this image first. Let's try it and see what happens. I need to not copy the colour and just drag it over. Oh, it's not doing too bad actually. I think it would have leaked out into the sky, but it's fine. Right, um, Command C. Let's see if it it doesn't pace with the colour. Okay, um, let's undo that. Let's go back to this one. So I'm going to do Command D Select. Um, I wonder if. I wonder if I could merge all of these other layers. There we go. That should work now. Let's try selecting. Oh, that's a bit of a trial and error. Oh, it's not picking the sky away. Let me come 
do we? Let's piece the neck out. Now the trouble with this is, I the reason this is not being quite so accurate anymore is that the cursor is not being able to differentiate between the pixels of the rock and the pixels of the sky. Oh, Okay, uh, candy, let's zoom in a little. Oh, I may have to um, use a different selection method. Let me try one more time, being a little bit more careful. I can um, adjust the size of the cursor as well, which can help sometimes be a little bit more, oh, let's take it back that way then. Um, piece it out and try again. Um, it can help be a little bit more um, accurate sometimes if the cursor is a bit smaller. Sorry, I'm concentrating while I'm doing this now. Um, let's pull across, pull across. Let's pick up these um, rocks down here. Now, because I know that this image is there's a bit of difficulty in selecting what I need. I'm just gonna take it step by step and I'm gonna release and click each time. And the reason for that is if it goes a little bit wrong and um, picks up the sky instead of the rock, I can just take a step like that. I can take a step back like that instead of having to redo the entire thing. So let's see what happens over this side. A little bit more. There we go. I think that's probably as good as I'm going to get it. It's not super accurate. I think if I try and get that bit of the edge of the rock, it's going to go leak out into the sky again. So I'm not going to risk that. Um, right, I'm going to do Command C to copy. Let's come on to our composition. Command V to paste. There we go. And we've got our lovely. Um, surreal looking colour scheme as well. So, Command T for tree free transform. I'm going to drop it and place it where I want it to be. And press enter. Now, um, as I said earlier, um, I'm going to try and create a symmetrical rock formation like Mariano Pecciani does, Pe Peccionetti. Um, I'm going to duplicate this layer. So now I've got two layers with these rocks on. Um, so if I do Command T, and this way you can see obviously I've got two versions of it now. Now what I want to do is I want to flip it so that it's a mirror image of it. So I'm going to come up to transform and I'm going to flip, oh, flip horizontal? Yes, flip horizontal, there we go. So it's flipped it to be a mirror image. So command T and I can come down here and position it to the way I want it to be. I'm looking to try to get it symmetrical so that um, the edge of that moon is going to come in line with this rock here as well. And I'm just going to press Command T and drop it. Okay. It's not looking too bad, actually. Right. Um, the other image I've got to play around with is this one. So, um, on, um, let me zoom out a little bit, on um, Mariano Peccianni's, uh, Peccianetti's image, um, you can see he's got these people down here sort of looking at the sun. Um, you know, he's sort of playing around with that, like watching a spectacle and um, you know, watching something quite surreal. So I went into Pexels and I found um, this image of people on a park bench, which I thought we could use. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is select um, the foreground and the people on the benches. Um, I'm going to try and use the quick selection tool, but because this is quite a um, complex image, um, I've got a feeling that it's going to pick up maybe some of the C and maybe some of the bits that we don't want. So I'm going to show you how we can get around that. So first of all, I'm going to start with the um, the quick selection tool. Let's come on a bit smaller, actually. Let's, let's um, try that. There we go. So I'm going to pick up this foreground down here first. And we 
again I can do the whole click of a time thing so that I'm just taking the bits that I want. So as I come up and try and get these um, people on the bench you can see that you know the cursor isn't differentiating between the, the, the bench and the sky behind so it's going to be picking up some stuff that we don't want. Um, let's see what happens with this bench. So there's a C on that one as well. There we go. Right. So I'm going to press Command and C to copy. We're going to go back to our composition and Command V and paste it. So first thing I'm going to do is Command T and I'm going to come down here and position it roughly where I want it to be, about there maybe, and press Command T. So I've got my people sat down watching this. Um, cosmic event going on in front of them. That moon is looking really pixelated actually, but never mind. Right, um, now, if I zoom in quite close, you can see that, you know, I've got bits of these, um, the, the sand and sky and so on from the original landscape, which I don't want. I just want the, um, the people, the bench, you know, the grass and so on. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a mask layer. So I'm going to come over here and click this icon, and you can see it's got a um, mask layer attached now to this bench layer. Now, what mask layers do is they allow you to paint um, paint a hole in a picture, basically. Um, if um, I come over here, you need to make sure you're painting in black. Um, I need a brush, that one, sorry. Um, what kind of size am I working with? Oh, that's not bad. Again, you can have soft edge, hard edge brushes, you can play around with the opacity and the size and so on. I'm going to keep it quite small for now and I'm going to show you what happens. If I paint black on here, you can see that it's allowing some of the, um, t taking away or making disappear the, um, the sand and the landscape from that original image and showing instead these purpley rocks that we created here. Um, I can do that all the way along, okay? So I can like, cha I can obviously change the size of my brush and make it a lot more um, accurate by, by zooming in and changing changing the size of the, pic the pixels of the brush and so on. Um, you know, it can come around the ed edge of the guy's head and so on. Now, the good thing about a mask layer is if you made a mistake and you um, accidentally erased something, like from that guy's head there, for example, um, you can obviously go to edit undo and it will undo the last thing that you did. You can go to the history panel and it will take you back to where you, where you were. But if you did this in like the middle of your editing and you only flat realise at the end, you know, you're not going to want to go back through all your history um, and delete some of the edits that you made, which were fine. So what you can do instead is you can now paint the um, uh, image back on by switching to white instead. So you can come down here, switch to white, and then I can just paint, and it doesn't matter, um, you know, it doesn't have to be too accurate because there technically isn't anything behind him, um, and paint that back on like so. And then I can switch back to black, and I can, um, you know, go back to um, editing again. So I'm not going to do any more on that because you can obviously see, um, see the effect. Um, but if this was going to be my final image, and that's what I would need to do, I would need to go around all this bench and you know eliminate the bits of scenery that I don't want. Um, now, the last thing I would do with this image is the foreground does look very, very different to what's going on behind. So I think I would play around a little bit maybe with contrast and a little bit with saturation, try, just to try to get this kind of effect um, that Mariano Peccinetti has. You know, he's used these images which look quite vintage, you know, they look like they've been taken back in maybe like the 60s or 70s or something, going by the, the grain on it and then the kind of saturation of the colours. So again, we're going um, to gonna make sure that I'm set, I'm on this layer, but because I was working on the mask layer, you can see that it's the mask layer that's selected. I'm going to make sure I'm on this bit now, which has got the image on it, and I'm going to go up to um, saturation again. Let's play around with that a little bit and we're going to pull through some of the saturation, make it look a little bit more um, brighter, I suppose. That will do. I'm also going to play around with contrast. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, you can do um, brightness and contrast here. 
which allows you to um, use these sliders to um, decide what you want to um, what you want to do. So you can see the effect there as I move it. So I'll press cancel on that. You can also use um, levels. Now what levels is is it's essentially a bar chart showing you how much of each tone is present in an image. So for example, um, this um, triangle here represents black. So we've got this one representing white, and this is the mid-gray. And go if you think of it like a bar chart, you can see that the most tones are here in the middle. This is the most mostly mid-gray tones. Um, what you can do to change the effect a little bit is you can pull this slider in to enhance some of the um, darker tones and you can pull this slider in to enhance some of the lighter tones and so you can play around with that depending on how much um, uh, effect that you want basically so that's one way of doing it and then lastly um, the one I prefer is curves and again um, you can see that you've got this bar chart going behind again so you've got black here white here all the mid grays in between and the bar chart representing how much of each tone there is um, now a um, well um, a well exposed image will generally have this line looking a bit like a like a flattened S. Okay, so what you can do is you can take the line and you can adjust it like this, and you can be really extreme with it. You know, you can like make some rather extreme adjustments depending on what kind of effect you want to do. Uh, but a well exposed image will gen generally look a little bit something like that. But again, it depends on the um, uh, original tones of what you're working with. Okay, um, I'm just going to try and adjust things a little bit. I keep I keep looking at that original image that my original piece created, thinking of like how we can how we can um change the tones a little bit. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. Let me see how much I move it down there. Um, so if I zoom in a little bit, you can see how the tones now do look quite unrealistic. You know, we've got some really, really dark areas on some of these people's um, hair and on the benches and so on. But, you know, the image that we're making is an unrealistic image. So I'm, I'm actually quite happy with that because it does actually look like um, there's four or five different images com composited together. Um, in the style of Marion and Fectionetti, really. Um, so yeah, so what you can also do um, after you've layered them all up together is, you know, if you need to sort of like step back a little bit and keep looking at it and decide whether or not you want to um, adjust any more um, contrast on particular layers and whether you want to like keep keep adjusting the, the hue and the saturation um, and, and again, the scale as well. But there we go, that's my first attempt at doing a Mariano Peccinetti collage. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Um, obviously if I was going to have this as a, as a piece in a project, I'd make sure I'd get rid of all these like, little bits that I've left, but um, I haven't gone into all that. Um, I just wanted to show you how to do it.